when you, well, when you drop stuff, everything accelerates at a constant rate. But how, you, how do you go about finding out what the relation, exact relationship is be, between position and time? So I, when I start to present this, I tell them how Galileo was the first one who um, actually figured out what the relationship between position and time was for a constantly accelerating object. One thing that we know he did was that he set up inclined planes and he rolled balls of different masses and sizes down ramps and that he used his pulse to time how long it took to go down the ramp. All you need for this is a metal sphere, some rubber bands, and an inclined plane. So at first, this, you know, I say to the students, what you're going to do is set up the rubber bands so that the ball hits the rubber band. You know, when, when the ball rolls across the rubber band, you hear that little, it's going to make a little noise, right? This is not exactly You hear that little bump that it makes, right? So, try, so I tell them to try to set up the rubber band so that it's going to hit each rubber band in a constant time interval. So the first thing that I want to do, because they've you know, been spending a week or so, or maybe two weeks on constant velocity, is set them up all in evenly spaced. If I roll the ball down from here with them relatively constantly spaced, you, you know, we'll hear what, what it sounds like. But. So you can hear that the time speeds up between clicks, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So they say, that's not what we want to do. We want to have them equally spaced in time and not in position. So this one was here. So then they set about this and they, you know, they say, oh, this is going to be impossible. But then within 10 or 15 minutes, all the groups over the past, well, 16 years, I guess, that I've been doing this are able to get right thing. Okay, so if I roll the ball down the ramp now, we'll hear, we'll, hopefully we'll hear that it's equal time intervals between little clicks. You can also show them without moving the rubber bands, you can actually increase the incline and yeah. increase the rate of acceleration and find out that it's equal time intervals but at a higher meter. So they get the idea that this relationship between the, the distance the ball rolls in equal time intervals, or in successive time intervals, is in a constant ratio no matter what the acceleration is. And then when you go and measure these things out, does, there, does everybody know what that ratio is? Uh, the odds. The odd integers, the odd right? Integers. So, when something's accelerating, in the first second, if it rolls, if it moves one unit in length, in the second second, it'll roll three units during that second second, five units during the third second, seven units during the fourth second, and so on and so forth. But, um, so then I have them graph this, and, oh, my graphs are here. Thank you, Joanna. So we get the familiar parameter. All right, thank you. So they measure out the positions just like in Joanne's lab, and they graph it, and they find out what the relationship between position and time is, and velocity and time, and acceleration and time. And then, of course, you can work backwards with the areas and the curves also. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. So all you need are some rubber bands, an inclined plane, and some various double spheres.